Let us sing unto the Lord. Let us make a joyful noise to the rock of our salvation. Let us come before his presence with thanksgiving and make a joyful noise unto him with psalms. Hallelujah. So we know why we're here today. And we are here to make a joyful noise unto the Lord. Let us pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, we know that you are a good, great, wonderful God. So today we come to celebrate you. Celebrate you not because it's your birthday, but to celebrate you because you are the King of Kings, the Lord of Lords, and you are the conquering lion of the tribe of Judah. And every day is a day of thanksgiving when we know that we are in your presence. Because in your presence there is fullness of joy. And at your right hand there are pleasures forevermore. So Holy Spirit, we invoke your presence in this place. We ask that you would come and you would sit in us and amongst us. And that you would have your name as we worship your holy name. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Can we sing that together? We worship. We worship your holy name. Lift your voice. Say worship your name. Thanksgiving 
Ought to be glad about it. He says you ought to be glad about it. Stop focusing on what ain't and celebrate what is. Be glad about it. Come on, be glad about it. That you can clap your hands. Hallelujah. That you can blink your eyes. That you can hear your name when it's called. We should rejoice and be glad about it. For the gift of a brand new day. You ought to be glad about it. For safe travel to this house of worship, you ought to be glad about it. But before you got here, you looked in your closet and you had something to put on. You ought to be glad about it. If you wanted some coffee, you could have gotten it. You ought to be glad about it. When you got in the car, it actually started. You ought to be glad about it. We've come, yes, to sing praises. To God's holy name. 
we've come to offer to the Lord that which God deserves. We don't come to church looking to give God what we have left. We give God our best because God makes life possible in the first place. Do I have any company? You, you, you respect God enough that you're not going to look to give God gratuity, but that the very breath in your body belongs to God. And so you come without permission to lift holy hands, to say thank you, Lord, to offer hallelujah, and pray that your worship and your praise is pleasing in the Lord's sight. Because I don't know about you, but I believe God. And I believe that as I praise God, as I extol the Lord, as I prioritize God beyond where I am and what I'm dealing with, that God who sits high and looks low will do for me what God has been so faithful to do through the years, and that is to be faithful and just, to lift me and settle me on a sure foundation. Anybody ever been unsure about some things? God is able to bring clarity to our uncertainty and stability when we're on shaky ground. Will you clap your hands if you know that to be true? We've come to celebrate the Lord today. As you're able, won't you stand where the Spirit of the Lord is? There is the true church. I hasten to remind you that this church was ransomed to be holy. We were bought with a price. This church is sanctified to be apostolic. This church is commissioned by the Lord Jesus himself to be universal. Therefore, with reverence, we reaffirm our belief through the use of the Apostles' Creed. I believe God the Father. Amen. You may be seated in the Lord's presence. Let the church say amen. amen. Good morning, faith. Good morning, faith. This is still the day the Lord has made. I trust you've come to give God thanks for another day's journey and for bringing us through another week. We want to say good morning to our virtual family and friends who may be with us in digital spaces today. We want to say we love you. We want to say to several of you, we miss you. And we are praying God's best for you and that you, like ourselves, would be blessed in worship today. Can we celebrate our virtual friends and family? Let them know we're thinking about them and trusting that the presence of the Lord will meet them where they are, even as we trust for that very thing here today. Grateful for the presence of Sister Kathy. God bless you, dear. Sister Loud in the house. I'm talking to you, girl. Good morning. Good to see you. Back in worship, she's been in recovery, and it's good to see your smiling face today. Come on, let's say amen. Asking that the church would keep in heart and mind by way of prayer several of our dear loved ones throughout the life of this congregation who are yet going through. They're pressing their way through. We are mindful of them in prayer and in tangible ways. And so 
As the Lord leads you this week, call somebody, text somebody, visit somebody, let them know that the church is mindful of them and that we are yet family in the Lord. Grateful this morning that we are celebrating by way of observation Maria L. Clinton Day. Say amen. amen. Who was, in fact, the very creative and trailblazing architect of the Buds of Promise who uh, dispersed through the congregation this morning. See all this green? You know why. It's Bud Sunday. Amen. And we are glad about their presence and worship and their participation today. Just before we have the uh, virtual announcements, I'm going to ask uh, little brother Moore to come uh, and to share if he's prepared um, for this Buds of Promise Observation Day. Let's praise the Lord as he comes. Amen. Following his presentation, we will have our virtual announcements, and then we will call upon the music ministry to return. I believe we have a few special features by way of the music ministry today, and so I'm asking that you would be prayerful and expectant for God to do something truly special in our midst today. Do you believe that? Amen. Do you believe God is up to something? Do you believe God can bless you in worship today? Well, if you're happy and you know it, clap your hands. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Good morning, Faith. Today is Buzz Sunday, and I would like to tell you about our, fo our founder, Ms. Marie L. Clinton. Ms. Marie Louise Clay Clinton was the organizer and first superintendent of the Buzz of Promise Juvenile Missionary Society. She was born in Huntsville, Alabama in 1871. Ms. Clinton was the wife of Bishop George Wiley Clinton. She loved children and having none of her own, she dedicated her life to children's work. She understood the importance of Christian training for very young children. Ms. Clinton worked diligently to see that children be included as part of the General Missionary Society. In 1904, her request, her request to include the children as an organized department of the Missionary Society was taken to the General Conference in St. Louis, Missouri. It was then that the department was adopted, and though her efforts became permanently known as the Buzz of Promise Department in 1908, Ms. Clinton served as the general superintendent for 28 years until 1932 and remained an enthusiastic worker until her death in 1934. In 1951, the Missionary Convention in Wilmington, North Carolina, voted that a day be set aside in, honor to, in order to honor the founder of the Buzz of Promise Department. Because of Ms. Marie L. Clay Clinton's love and devotion to children and works of missions, the fourth Sunday of January is recognized as Maria L. Clinton Day. Come on, let's say amen. amen. That was special for multiple reasons. Uh, I happen to, to know him quite well, for one. And for two, that was his last official act as a bud. He's 13 now, so he's, in the words of George Jefferson, moving on up. <laughs> Not necessarily to the east side, but to another delegation within the Missionary Society. Come on and clap your hands. We, we want to celebrate the Lord. We're going to have our virtual announcements, and then on the other side of the announcements, just before the music ministry, we have a special announcement slash acknowledgement by way of the Willie C. Jones Scholarship team. Amen. amen. We know that, amen. I'm glad you're excited about that. You can clap for that. We have the concert coming up next month, and there is growing excitement about that. And so they're going to come and share a word regarding that, and then we will continue in worship. Let the church say, 
Amen. Good morning and welcome to Faith AME Zion Church. We are so blessed to have each and every one of you here with us today. Thank you for joining our worship service. Today, we recognize Marie L. Clinton Day. Marie L. Clinton was the organizer and first superintendent of the Buds of Promise Juvenile Missionary Society. The mission of the Women's Home and Overseas Society is to establish Christian learning environments and experiences for all children ages 1 through 12 through mission education. These experiences will enable each child to acquire the knowledge, beliefs, and attitudes that are essential to his or her spiritual development as an individual and are necessary for the attainment of a meaningful life. Today, we recognize Willie C. Jones Jr. Scholarship Sunday. The scholarship fund was established to support high school graduates pursuing a four-year degree. Everyone is invited to join us for an afternoon of musical brilliance with world-renowned singers Timothy Miller, Nagwanda Nobles, and Ben Polite benefiting the Willie C. Jones Jr. Scholarship Fund on Saturday, February the 17th at 2 p.m. at the Peachtree Christian Church. Tickets are $60. All members are asked to support the event with the purchase or donation of a concert ticket and to assist in selling additional tickets to your friends and associates. See Reverend Berlin Blake to get your tickets today. It's Girl Scout cookie time. Girl Scout cookies are $6 per box. Support the troops at Faith with your cookie purchase. This year, we are donating cookies to Covenant House, transitional housing for youth facing homelessness and escaping trafficking. Order your cookies today. Cookies will be delivered Sunday, February the 11th. And remember, every bite counts. The Atlanta District Women's Home and Overseas Missionary Society 2024 Walker Mile will take place on February 3rd, 2024 from 9 a.m. to 1 p.m. at the Lovejoy Life Center in Rome, Georgia. This year's event will include an indoor track, exercise classes, wellness checks, spiritual health presentations, vendors, door prizes, snacks, and more. Make plans to attend. Save the date for the Board of Bishops, International Ministers, and Lay Association Annual Meeting February 20th through 23rd at the Kenneth Monroe Transformation Center in Rock Hill, South Carolina. For your convenience, we offer electronic giving options. Give online using Givelify or PayPal, text your offering, or mail your contribution to the church. Thank you for supporting our ministry. For more information on the update shared, please visit our website or contact the church office by phone or email. Have a blessed and wonderful week as we move forward together by faith. Bless the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Greetings. Greetings. All right. Now I can see some smiles. I'm not going to say anything until I see smiles all over this house. All right. I'm seeing smiles. Even behind the masks, I'm seeing smiles. Amen. Jesus is the center of our joy. Is that right? Yes, yes, yes. Now, it was great this morning. And I mean it from a genuine place to hear about Marie L. Clinton. But I think it's an awesome privilege to be able to speak about one of our very own. One of our very own. So often we fail to give flowers and roses until after the event. Um, so I encourage us today to give each other those accolades while we're still yet alive. I stand today on behalf of the Willie C. Jones Scholarship Committee, 
And before I go any further, I just want us to, in a good faith way, because I know not everything about faith we do greatly, but I'm asking you to do this great. I'm going to ask you to give a round in applause for his sister who is in the house today. Let's give her a faith rousing applause. Hallelujah. To God be the glory. It's lovely to have you with us today. Hallelujah. And we thank God for his life and for his legacy. We know that he was an advocate of education. And so he started, founded this scholarship that if you have a sister, a brother, a niece, a nephew, a grandchild who is anything to do with Faith AME Zion Church, they can benefit from his legacy. Amen? Amen. And so when you hear us announcing the concert, it's not just because we feel like doing another concert, but it's because it's about a worthy course. Now, I have a whole grandchild. Yes, she may only be 17 months old, but because she belongs to me and because I belong to Faith, she can benefit from the scholarship. All right? So if you have children who attend here, who, who have attended here, and you love children and you think that education is important and valuable, then that's when it's your time to play your part. And how you can help us and help our children and help our future and even help the older ones of us who take ourselves through four years of degree. I'm a benefactor. As old as I am, I was blessed to receive something from this very scholarship committee last year after I attained my master's degree. So if you have a desire as an individual to learn, to go back to education, if you just want to be that great auntie, that great uncle, that great grandparent who wants to see children, even if they are not your biological own, if you just want to bless this scholarship fund, then I'm going to ask you to, now let me get this straight. I have been giving people tickets, five tickets to sell. That's not a whole lot. They're only $60 each. You heard the well-famous, well-renowned artist that will be at the concert. They will be ministering to us from different genres. You'll also be getting something to eat. And just think about that. Y'all love food. You know, food makes a difference. So within that $60, include something to eat. So I'm going to ask you to take five tickets from me today at the end of this service, only $60 each. You can go and take a loan out if you can't sell them and just come bring me the $300. But I'm going to ask you to take five tickets each from me today. And the task isn't to sell them to each other because you're all going to have your own. The task is to go outside of faith and to sell those tickets. They're going to benefit you your children, and all of these children here are ours anyway. Yeah? So come see me after church for your individual five tickets. That means if there are two adults in the household, y'all have ten tickets to sell. Just putting it out there, looking at the troubles, looking at me. <laughs> Amen. God bless you all, and thank you in advance, and see you there. Good morning, Faith. Uh, I just want to say that I am a past bud of promise. And I had to wear that. I don't know if you guys grew up with the, with the, the, the goofy hat. I wasn't going to say it, but. <laughs> All right, but how many still got joy? How many, I mean, how many still have joy through the storm and the rain and heartaches and pain? The Faith Theories are here to let you know that we still have joy. Uh. 
After all, after all, after all, everything I see, thank God I still, I still, I still have joy. Through the storm and the rain, through heartache, yes, and pain. Thank God I still, I still, I still have joy. After all, after all, through everything, thank God I still, I still, I still have joy. Through the storm and the rain, through heartache, yes, and thank God I still, I still, still have joy. Down through the years, you know the Lord has come and dried my tears. I still, I still have joy. Weeping may endure for a night, cause early in the morning, don't you know, faith, it'll be all right. I still, I still have joy. After all, after all, After all, through everything I see, thank God I, I, still, I, still, I still, I still have joy. Through the storm and the rain, through heartache, yes, and thank God I still. I still have Down through the years You know the Lord has come and dried my tears I still I still have Weeping may endure for a night Cause early in the morning, don't you know we will be alright? I still, I still have joy. After all, after all, through everything, don't you know I still, I still, I still. Through the storm and the rain, through heartache, yes, thank God I still, still, don't you know that I still have joy? We still have joy. Do you have joy? I still have joy. Through heartache and pain. I still have joy. Through the sadness and tears. I still have joy. Through the heartache and I still have joy. Do you have joy? I still have joy. Do you have joy? We all have joy. I still have joy. We all have joy. I still have joy. The faithers have joy. I still have joy. We all have joy. I still have joy. Do you have joy? I still have joy. Through the storm, 
and the rain through hard and yes thank god i i still i still have joy I too was a bud back in California and we had to sing, not, and we had to sing every third Sunday in these interesting jumpers. And our, <laughs> we never got to sing exciting songs, and she would never let us clap or rock or nothing. She's like, it's serious, sing. And I remember I was like, when I get older and I'm in the choir, I'm going to rock, and I'm going to clap. So I want y'all to enjoy these beautiful babies. Amen. Amen. We're celebrating Bud Sunday, amen. And we have Joy. Joy, what you mean, Hudson? Okay. All right. Come on, kids. Here we go. And praise team, with the help of the praise team. Here we go. Oh! 
morning, clap your hands. Thank God for joy. Because joy comes from God. And so we thank him for it. Thank God for the faith heirs reminding us that they still got it. And in case you were skeptical, the children came and sprinkled some more. Come on and tell the Lord, thank you. Thank God for God's joy. Hallelujah. God, we do indeed thank you. Even right now, the joy of the Lord is our strength. You are faithful. And we thank you for the evidence of your presence. Come thou incarnate word. Gird on thy mighty sword. Lord, our prayer attend. Please come and your people bless. Come give your word success. Spirit of holiness, on us descend. For thine, for only thine is the kingdom the power and the glory forever. Thank God and amen. Can we give God thanks again for our children? I tell you, the Lord is a one. chapter 2 verses 25 through 33 the gospel according to the Greek physician second chapter beginning with verse 25 I don't think you were in worship when I championed this that you established, but since you're here, I'm going to say it today. When you get there, say amen. If you're not going, don't lie. That's courtesy of Jeffrey Triple Senior. Listen now for the word of the Lord. Now there was a man in Jerusalem whose name was Simeon. This man was righteous and devout, looking forward to the consolation of Israel, and the Holy Spirit rested on him. It had been revealed to him by the Holy Spirit that he would not see death before he had seen the Lord's Messiah. And guided by the Spirit, Simeon came into the temple. And when the parents brought in the child Jesus to do for him what was customary under the law, Simeon took him in his arms and praised God, saying, Master, now you are dismissing your servant in peace, according to your word. For my eyes have seen your salvation, which you have prepared in the presence of all peoples, a light for revelation to the Gentiles and for glory to your people, Israel. And the child's father and mother were amazed 
what was being said about him. Thus far is the word of the Lord. I have a very important appointment today at 3 p.m., so I'm not going to hold you too long. I want to share for a few moments this morning from the thought, the joy of his appearing. The joy of his appearing. Today, the Amy Zion Church takes time in worship services around the world to be sure our African sisters and brothers have already concluded various worship services while we're in service right now. To remember the life and witness of Marie L. Clinton. For over 65 years, the Connectional Church has observed a day of remembrance and honor of her and her many contributions to the work of missions in particular. For those who may not be as familiar, she was not only an educator and effective missionary, but she was also a missionary supervisor, having been married to Zion's 25th bishop, the late George Wiley Clinton. Marie Clinton, in more famous ways, is known as the Buds of Promise founder, which you have heard. And it is indeed the juvenile branch of the Women Homes and Overseas Missionary Society. Ages 1 through 12, for those who may not know this information, when admitted formally concretized a space in the domestic and international work of Christian min mission for young people. This was and remains significant. Tell them you call them right back. The importance of this is for several reasons, with one of the primary ones being, if children are near to the heart of Christ and they are included in his message, which they were, then they must not only be a part of his mission by way of them being saved, but there must also be a place reserved for children to serve. Let the church say amen. amen. We here in the Georgia Conference, Atlanta District, and specifically Faith Church are very blessed with tremendous missionary leadership, inclusive of our local bud superintendent, one lady, Miriam A. Moore. I'll say amen to that. Mother Clinton, for me this morning, serves as a reminder that in the words of the late Martin Luther King Jr., the time is always right to do what is right. Today, more than ever before, we are to consider in intentional ways our children and our young people. They need us. They deserve our best. And one can never tell through our attentiveness, prayers, and love. I got some current and retired educators in the house who can testify. One can never tell when you nurture and love and guide which one of them will eventually grow up to change the world. This morning, I am led of the Spirit to approach the wondrous gift of joy from yet one final perspective for now. As such, we are invited to this morning's passage. The name Simeon isn't as familiar as Moses, David, Deborah, or Dorcas. However, the person of Simeon in the New Testament is of increasing importance, if for no other reason, for the purposes of today's message. We do not know much about him. 
to be sure, this is not the same Simeon who's one of the 12 sons of Israel. While long life is not uncommon in the ancient world of the Bible, this is not the same Simeon for whom a tribe was named. But we do know that he's an older fellow and that he had relationship with God. Sometimes I want to say he has a sermonic footnote. Sometimes that's enough. You don't need to know everything about me. All you need to know is that I'm a child of God. We do know, however, that the Bible says the Spirit of the Lord, the Holy Ghost, the Holy Spirit, said to him, you will not die until you have seen the Lord's Messiah. What a marvelous promise. Simeon, in the text, is found in the temple, having been guided by that same Holy Spirit. And there has this chance encounter with Mary, Joseph, and in our SV says, the child Jesus. He takes the young Savior in his arms. Can you see it? And praises God for the Lord keeping a faithful promise to this devout believer. To be sure, Simeon's not a Christian. He's a Jew. Because the Bible says he is waiting like his people for the consolation of Israel's return to former glory. That the Messiah is to come and restore Israel as the sovereign nation, favored by the true and living God, raising Israel up while casting down their oppressors and the nations that have tried to take the place of God's people. I, I, I've, I've played this scene in my mind several times in preparation for this morning, and it remains powerful with every consideration. Seeing a, a toddler Jesus taken in the arms of an old church member and the member thanking God that he has seen the Lord. Simeon teaches us in his own way that life with God will always be better than life without the Lord. He demonstrates for us that spending time in the house of the Lord has its benefits. But what I would like to press this morning is that Simeon's encounter with the Lord Christ related to joy is significant, and I want to speak to that a little with the time that remains. In similar ways to happiness, Christians have had the impression that you have to receive something or travel somewhere exotic to be a recipient of joy. But this is a gross misconception. If in fact joy is a gift, then we do not receive joy based on some kind of capitalistic exchange or endeavor. God does not function as the world. I wish some, some so-called Christians would understand it. I wish some of these right-wingers would get the message, God does not function like you do. The Bible says, my ways are not your ways. Neither are my thoughts, your thoughts, as the heavens are higher than the earth. God works at a higher elevation than we do. Um, God does not function as the world, and God is likewise the one who reigns over it. And so... In contrast to what I just said, joy is found or joy is received often in the fulfillment of a divine promise. 
or put another way here's the heart of the message in case you getting the spirit of sleeping we are able to experience joy when we finally see what God has spoken I'm here to remind a few of you a few of us and to announce to others, God keeps God's promises. Oh, I thought somebody would have popped up for that. I don't know where you are right now in your sojourn in this thing called life, but you need to be reminded, and some of you who have not heard, God is a promise keeper. I, I can't move just that fast right now, so you all bear with me. I I've come to declare, God told you something, and God's going to do what God told you. Every word spoken from the mouth of God will manifest. It will come to pass. The Lord our God has never said something, and there was no evidence of what has been spoken. Here is Simeon, this righteous and devout brother who lived his life anchored with one word from God. Keep living. <laughs> Keep living because you won't die before you see the Lord. And that's enough right there. We can really pack up and go home following the offering, of course. But that's enough for you to stand not only through today, but to inform the week ahead that God will not let you expire until you see the promises fulfilled and there are promises that were written and agreed upon before we were born. But God, either way, hallelujah, he's going to do it. In so many words, you, I want to say from my heart to yours, you're going to live to see it happen. I wonder if I have some agreement this morning. I wonder if anybody can, can believe that today, that no matter what we're going through, in spite of the challenges that may appear and reappear, I know what God told me, and it will come to pass. A few observations we make from this text as it relates to the joy of his appearing. Firstly, the joy of his appearing requires faith in the plan of God. I, I know it's simple. I, I regret, Brother Ray, there was no Aramaic to accompany what I just said. No Hebrew or Greek sprinklings, but, but that's really it. You, you, you cannot really put one foot in front of the other without your faith. Because the Bible says if you are more fixated upon your controlling and navigating the journey, then your life is not as informed by faith as you would suppose. The Bible says it very plainly, we walk by faith and not by sight. Now, by all means, don't close your eyes. Keep your eyes open. But keep your spirit open also because there will be times, I don't know if any of you have experienced this, but I know that there have been instances in my life where I did all the right things and still came short. I, I still missed it. I still went too far. I still did not go far enough. And faith is that small, little, powerful something that will help you to make the difference between where you are and where God wants you to be. 
We, we, we don't know Simeon's kin. We, we, we don't know which tribe he's from. We do not know how long he had been walking with the Lord. All we have is what's in the passage, and that is he was righteous, he was devout, and the Spirit, and he spoke often. And one of the things the Spirit said to him, you will not die. Until you see, S-E-E, -E, until you see the Lord's Messiah. Now, now, here's the thing, and, and, and you may not think it because it's the Bible, but, but, but there are people in the Bible who have talked to God and ignored God and what God said just as soon as they heard from him. You don't believe me. There, there, there's some who've laughed at the Lord. There's some who've denied the Lord. There's some who've betrayed the Lord. There are instances where we know God is working and we resist it, not because we don't want the benefit of God's plan, but we are unwilling to relinquish whatever it is that allows faith to take center stage. And as long as our faith in God is compromised, the plan of God will be stagnated. It is frustrating trying to attach documents to email, Jonathan, and Wi-Fi goes out. My, my, my father-in-law is here. He, he taught me this term, digital demons. Those demons get in that mechanism, corrupting and perverting the gigabytes and the software and the hard drive. And when you need, I'm, I'm talking here, when you need certain things done, it goes awry. It's frustrating. It, it's, it's bothersome because this completed work qualifies you to move on to what's next. I'm really saying more than what you're hearing right now. And, and, and so what faith will do will, is, is it'll keep you calm long enough until you don't react to that thing, but you know how to respond. And instead of you throwing the machine against the wall, you take a step back, you close your eyes, you woo-saw, you take some breaths, or you say, in the name of Jesus, you're going to act right today. And then the Wi-Fi comes back, and then stuff starts blinking on the screen, and you're able to do what you need to do. But this requires faith not in the instrument, but in the God who makes instrumentation possible. The joy of his appearing requires faith in the plan of God. It's God's plan, not yours. Trust God for God's plan. The joy of his appearing also requires patience with the will of God. Again, it, it's, 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 a, it's a difficult text in this regard because there, there, there are so many questions I'd like to ask Simeon, but I do not have permission to do so. I, I really wanted to know what his family life was like. Did, what, was he a dad? Was he ever married, ever engaged? Ever let that good thing go? Brother Simeon, were you an older brother? Were you a younger brother? Where'd you go to school? I don't know. But what I do know is that the will of God dictated in his life that he maintain a certain moral and ethical and spiritual posture so that God's promise would not be forfeited in his life. Can we talk for a minute? You can have faith all day long. You can believe what God says. 
But if your patience gets compromised, you can still end up in trouble. Because what you can control is just that, what you can control. But what you cannot control is how certain pieces of the puzzle come together. The will of God is the sole intellectual property of God. God copyrighted it a long time ago. And when God's will is revealed to us, it is already fixed, designed, arranged as God wants it. We require the faith that I just spoke about because the faith we have in God allows for favorable and victorious outcomes within that will. The will of God manifests often in at least two ways. There's God's providential will, and we know all things God works together, dot, dot, dot. Where, where, where in this sequence of events, highs, lows, good, bad, joy, sorrow, we still come out on the winning side. That, that's providential. Where, where your, your life journey takes unexpected twists and turns and somehow God still graciously, mercifully navigates your life to have you arrive at the expected place. That's providential. It's not your sense, it's, it's, it's providence. But, but then there's the permissive will. That's when, as we say from time to time, stuff happens. Some of y'all are hearing what I'm saying. It, it's, it's, it's when you have your arrangements and your schedule and your plans all laid neatly out. Like, like a child excited about the first day of school who lays out their outfit on the bed the night before. You're excited, you're, you're eager, you're ready. And then the unexpected happens. Something you did not foresee, something that was not in your calculation appears. And often, because of our lack of quality time with God, we jump ahead of God instead of employing patience with God. Sometimes, child of God, in this year, which is 2024, sometimes when circumstances arise that are either not favorable or unexpected, the very best thing for you to do is to stay still. Don't move. Stay where you are. Because while you are trying to process Whatever it is that's going on, you've got to be mindful and knowledgeable enough that God is right there with you. And I don't know about you, but I am developing a greater and deeper appreciation for knowing that even when I don't hear the Lord, even when I don't see the Lord, the Lord is right there with me. The Bible says that Simeon was righteous and devout and that his relationship with God was so intimate that he was guided by the Spirit to arrive at the temple at the same time Mary, Joseph, and Jesus were scheduled to appear for the customary presentation of the children at the temple. What would it look like for you to be so in sync with God that your schedule coordinates with what God's will is for your life? I'm here to tell you that if you are eager or interested for more information, 
information. You don't need to visit a website. You need to get with God in prayer. You need to take some time to fast because you cannot be concerned about what has been, though it may still to some degree affect your life in the present. Concentrate in the present and for all means and purposes, ask God not for more things, but for the opportunities to increase in patience. Because when you grow in patience, you understand that nothing happens without God's permission. And that if God loves you, nothing will come in your direction that will bring about your destruction. I can imagine that there were periods in Simeon's life, and I'm moving here, where he wondered to himself, Lord, in the words of the prophets, how long? I've seen friends and family come and go, how long? I've seen priests in and out of the temple, how long? When will the day come when I see what you've promised me? But that's why patience is so important, dear friends, because if you employ patience, then the fulfillment and the joy that is experienced when you see God's word manifest will be that much more pronounced and potent because it's not like you abandoned ship. No, you stayed right there. And so I'm saying to somebody that while there are people you have conversation with telling you it's okay for you to quit, it's okay for you to turn around and surrender, it's all right for you to retreat, I want to say in a very loving way, don't believe them. I know that they mean well, and they're really not trying to do anything to harm you. But child of God, I want to say to you to stay where you are. In fact, if you move at all, continue forward. I know it's not comfortable. I know it doesn't make sense. I know you don't have all the resources. I know that it's not all that you thought it would be. But if God said something, you don't have to worry about when it happens. You keep moving to the time where you see it for yourself because when God speaks it's not so much a matter of when but if you can endure and arrive at the place where what God has spoken can be seen in real time the joy of his appearing finally requires appreciation for the grace of God. Simeon takes the Savior in his arms and praises God saying, Master, I can rest now. No, 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 he, he, he says, that's a misquote. He says, your servant can now rest in peace. Because I've seen your salvation. I don't know how long Simeon had to wait. But I believe with all of my heart that to hold the promised one in his arms to look into his little eyes and to see the dreams and the answered prayers of hundreds and millions of people to look upon his face and know that this face strongly resembles the face of God it was well with his soul. I, I, I don't know what you're believing God for. Quite frankly, it's, it's, it's really none of my business. But, but 
for God's sake, keep waiting. Keep trusting. Keep, keep believing because when it happens, the worst thing that you can do is grow indignant or show a lack of appreciation because it took too long to happen. It'd be a horrible travesty for God to show you that which God has spoken and you get all ugly and tight in the face because it's not the color you thought it would be. It doesn't have the physical dimensions you thought it would have. It doesn't have the amount of zeros in it you thought it would have. It does not have the horsepower you thought it might have. She does not have the curves you thought she had. He don't have the height you thought he had. For God's sake, don't make that mistake. Rather appreciate God loving you enough to do what God said God would do. Don't you know how many times we really become disqualified for God's promises? Don't you know how often we can be stubborn and be downright contrary? Don't you know that in this body no wholesome or righteous thing dwells? And don't you know that even when we are righteous, the apostle says all of our righteousness is as as filthy rags if it were not for God's grace sanctifying us and cleansing us and restoring us Simeon was brought to the place I'm through, where he saw what God had spoken and he could not stop praising God at the joy of his appearing Bishop Marshall Strickland tells the story of, uh, of his appointment to, to Pennsylvania Avenue Church in, in Baltimore from, from his appointment in Mobile and, and upon the election of Clinton Coleman, he got elected and Strickland got appointed to Penn Ave and, and he says he was so overwhelmed trying to navigate the streets of Baltimore. A little different than Mobile, he, he, he said he'd never seen such colorful people. Uh, you, 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 you interpret that how you will. He, 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 he kept getting lost. Uh, and he was growing nervous because this, this was a major appointment after all. And this, this was a historic congregation. And he's the new preacher in town. And, and he can't even find his own church building. He, he goes this way and too, too far north and goes another way and, and he's too far south. And he finally decides with his educated self to stop and ask for directions. He asked for directions and guess what happened? He took the directions and oh shucks, they gave him bad directions. He's still lost, still, still trying to find his way. Don't you know how bad that feels? I don't know if you've experienced it, but have you ever stopped to ask somebody for direction and they take you in a worse place than where you were? If I was lost and I'd known you make me more lost, I would have kept driving from you. You. He finally sees a law enforcement officer and says, Sir, I'm lost. I'm trying to find the Pennsylvania Avenue AME Zion Church. The officer says, I know where it is. Three lights, two lefts, a right, and a left. You'll know it when you see it. I said, all right, three, 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 from, from here, yeah, yeah, three lights, two lefts, a right, and a left. You'll know it when you see it. Mr. Strickland is sad, walking back to his car, scared out of his mind, because if an officer can't help you, he's doomed. Gets in the car and 
takes the direction the officer said and when he gets to the place he pulls over and the spirit of anxiety tries to overwhelm him because he's here because he believes God's will for his life he didn't want to leave Mobile but he trusted God and he's here and can't even get to the physical location of what he believes is God's purpose but then he gets out the car he looks around and then he looks up and he sees the cross. And tears begin to flow down his face when he retells this story because he says, when I saw the cross, I knew I was in the right place. And all I've come to tell somebody this morning is that there will be moments where you've prepared and you've prayed and you'll still end up lost. And, and you won't know what's going on and you'll be trying to decipher was it a bad decision? Was I impolite with somebody? Did I do the Lord wrong? What have I done to find myself in this place? Oh, don't throw in the towel. Don't quit. Don't surrender. Just hang in there. And when you arrive, the Spirit will impress upon you. Just look up. Just look up. And when you see the cross, you'll know that you've been found. What can wash away my sin? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. What can make me whole again? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. Oh, precious is that flow that makes me bright as snow. No other fount I know. Nothing but the blood of Jesus. I don't know if you've ever seen the Lord. I don't have a physical description beyond the scripture, but I have seen him. I've seen them work. I've seen them bless. I've seen them restore. I've seen him excommunicate. I've seen him fix some things. I've seen him handle some things. I've seen him heal bodies. I've seen the crooked made straight. I've seen the rough made smooth. I am a witness to the joy of his appearance. That he is still today. Jesus is still a sight for sore eyes and balm for sick souls. He's still, yes, Brother Andre Crouch, God rest his soul. He's still the answer for the world today. I've come to remind somebody, above him there's no other. Jesus is the way. My prayer for you is that wherever you find yourself, especially in instances where you're far from God, that you would draw nigh to the Lord, that God would draw nigh to you, and that you would be refreshed with his promises concerning you. And you wait. Until you see what God has spoken. Everyone is standing. Our heads are bowed, our eyes are closed. last verse of the text says that his parents were amazed at what Simeon had spoken. Perhaps their amazement was because they were new to this parenting thing and were simply trying to do what was best. They were striving to be in order. 
with their religious and cultural practice. But one of the things I love about the Lord is that God has a way of adding super to the natural and adding extra to the ordinary. His parents didn't, they didn't know Simeon would be there. If you keep traveling, you'll see in the, in the passage where there's a prophet, a prophetess named Anna, who speaks a on-time word concerning him. I, I don't know exactly how or when, but when the time is right, you will see what God has spoken. You got to protect the seed of that promise. Don't let it go. Don't abandon it. Don't throw it away. Don't let it accidentally fall down the proverbial sink. who are spiritual protect your seed because when the Lord gets a moving that's folk speech when the spirit of the Lord is moving it will not identify you but you will be identified by the seed Because when the Lord is at work, that which draws God's attention is the God or the spirit that is within, that is around, that is evident. The Bible says this, no flesh can glory in the Lord's presence. And that's why we're standing. We're standing because the Lord is here. And, and, and God is moving. God is speaking. And the distractions that come are to do what they're designed to do. But God is here. And God wants to bless. And so, Lord, we thank you for your presence. We thank you for the ways in which you get our attention. And yes, there are a few of us who are even thankful for the moments where we're driven to our knees in prayer. Because we've learned that which the scripture says that it's not by power or by might but it's got to be by your spirit. And so I'm praying Lord for these your people, your children who are here in the sanctuary, in the fellowship hall, in the virtual space. I'm praying that you would speak a word in season. And that the word that we hear, we would not ignore it. We would not deny it, but that we would receive it. That the instructions that you give us, we would be so very careful to follow them. That the word that you give us would be confirmed through the word of God. For you are not a man or woman that you should lie. Nor their offspring that you would change your mind. And so God we thank you for the reestablishing of order. 
We thank you, God, that you are even now, I pray in Jesus' name, encouraging the heart, strengthening the mind of those who love and trust you, that we who seek and desire your presence, we who are desiring of your will to be done would not be rattled would not retreat but that we would remain steadfast unmovable and most of all that we would abound always in your work so God I thank you ah God I thank you for the increase of desire, yes, the men of this church, yes, yes. For the increase of desire to do the will of God, to do the things of God. I thank you, God, for even people, even right now as we're standing, for the decrease of carnal activity and the increase of good godly things. Yes, yes, I thank you. I thank you that, that you now are tending and tilling the soil. And I pray, Lord, that as, as many of us as would be obedient, that you would refine us in your word, that you would build in us greater capacities for more joy, that we wouldn't hesitate to testify and to encourage others in the Lord. Thank you that is in as many as are receiving it, they're doing it now. You are blessing, you are touching even now. You are planting right now. I thank you, I thank you, I thank you, I thank you, I thank you. I thank you that there will be evidence I thank you that in the latter years, you are bringing a freshness. I thank you that you are refining protection of the young. So eager, yet so vulnerable. Thank you for the blood. Thank you for the blood. Thank you that it does not lose power. It does not lose authority. Thank you that it fuels the weapons of our warfare, which are not carnal but mighty. Unto God, to the pulling down of strongholds. We thank you for advancing your work, your spirit, the agenda of your kingdom in this place. Bless those, O oh God, in the virtual space, even now. Thank you for allowing them to stay connected long enough to receive the word of the Lord today. We pray also for them. Good success. Groundedness in their faith. We're going to see what you've spoken. Thank you, God, for doing all things well. Thank you for blessing us with your presence today. I pray that we would be encouraged to keep running this race with patience, looking to Jesus, who is the author and the finisher. These things we ask, these things we trust, these things we believe you for in your name, even the strong, wonderful name of Jesus. We say amen. We say amen with the clapping of our hands. We say amen with hallelujah. We believe. You may be seated. Perhaps, however, as we prepare to transition, perhaps, 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 there's one or two that need to come. I don't want to move without extending that opportunity. You know who you are. You know why you may need to. Perhaps there are one or two of you that were waiting for an invitation to the altar. 
If you're here, come. I don't want to prolong the moment. You know who you are. If you're here. I don't want to delay. If you're here, I want you to come. Come on.
Listen, listen, before they go, is there anybody who can say hallelujah for them? Hallelujah. Because when you thank God for what God is doing with other people, God's going to make a U-turn and come in your direction. Can you say hallelujah, hallelujah for what God's doing for them? Now say hallelujah for yourself. Come on, let's worship. Let's celebrate the Lord. Bless the name of Jesus. Stand with her. Real quick, real quick.
Son, get excited. Get excited. You. Yeah, you. Just get, get excited. I have absolutely no clue what that means. But get excited. I love you. That's, that's all I have. I, I, I have absolutely no clue. Get excited. We're praying. We're trusting God. Time for excitement again. will say thank you makes room for more we ought to say thank you every chance we
Let's clap. Let's clap. Let's clap. Let's clap. Let's clap. Our clapping seals some things. Prayers right now are going up from this sanctuary. Blessings are being distributed. Thank God for his presence. God's even working with the ushers back there. God, thank God's even in the sound room right now. God, God is here. And I'm sure grateful for it. We prepare to sow. Faith, we, we cannot move forward fully without your sustained support. And in that, I express my gratitude to every single one of you, including those dear sisters and brothers in the virtual space. Thankful for those of you who've already given today, thanking God for those who are preparing to do so. Grateful for what's on the way. We said last week, and I carried it with me all week long, said last week God is about to do something special. One of our children got saved. I figure I, I, figure I want to say it again. God's about to do something special. I trust you'll receive it. Don't just receive it, though. Be on the lookout for it. Be on the lookout for it. Be on the lookout for it. If you're happy and you know it, ushers are coming now. Say Catch them on the way man. down. Say gifts that have been received. We thank you, God, for the seed, for the sower, for the gifts for the giver. We pray in your name that you will continue to multiply and to exceed our every expectation. God, meet our needs. Supply them according to your riches and glory. Oh, God, in whom there is no failure, we pray that these receipts of blessing would be pleasing in your sight and that you would bless us the more with the resources to be that much more active for thy kingdom's sake we pray in your name. The Lord bless and keep you. The Lord cause God's face to shine upon you. The Lord our God lift the light of his countenance upon you. May you be blessed and even be blessed to be a blessing. May the joy of the Lord be your portion even as you go in peace. As you go, the God of peace be ever with you. This we ask and believe in Jesus' strong name, his wonderful name. We say thank God. Come on, thank God. And amen. Our acolytes will come and then we are dismissed. If you
bless you. We love you. We'll see you real soon. Be safe as you head out. Pray for my three o'clock appointment, won't you? Love you. Love you. Make you shout.